Hello, friends. Hunter and Mark made it back from the cabin today. It was finally good enough weather they could fly. Just went and got these beautiful broccoli out of the garden. And some lettuce for a salad. Also picked handfuls of raspberries today. So it feels like harvesting season is upon us. We are having a sunny day today and we are supposed to get rain for the next five days. So we are going to go check the bees. Oh, Miss Luna heard me talking. She is definitely taking advantage of this afternoon sun. Oh, that looks like a nice place to nap. Sweet girl. Hi. She's like, come take a nap with me. All right, we're gonna head out and do the bees. Okay, so we were gone at the cabin. Um, we've given the bees we calculated about three and a half weeks since Mark caged the queen. So the hope is that we got all the queen cells the last time we checked the hive. That there's no new queens, no brood, and that maybe, just maybe, there's some honey. I'm really interested to see how the bees are doing because we have had some really nice days here at the end of the summer, and that could be really good. Hopefully we'll see if there's a silver lining on this season. It started out really painful. I mean, these bees were hardly doing anything. They're really struggling, but we had some really nice days the last uh, couple weeks and we're hoping that fingers crossed, everything came together and we can get a little bit of honey out of these hives. So I know these girls have been working really hard these sunny days. You just see them coming and going, just really active. So excited to see what's in there. We've been watching this year. You may recall that this hive, this has been not performing as well as the other. So we're gonna check it first and see how it's doing. You know, and hopefully we don't regret not having smoke today. If they get too aggressive, we'll just have to call it off. So it's scheduled to rain for the next five days. And if we don't take the honey now, we're getting to the point in the summer that they're gonna start eating down their honey stores pretty quickly. And so we could lose quite a bit of our honey harvest. So you may wonder if we harvest our own honey. We have in the past, we've rented the centrifuge and done it in a hot knife. Um, and then the last couple of years, we have taken it to uh, like the beekeeping association and they have a hot house where they do it. So we'll see what we end up doing. Ooh, I see some honey finally in this one. For sure. We've got quite a bit of pollen in here and then honey on the edges. It's just a little heavier, which is good. Just backside, a little, little bit of honey. So we'll There's see so how we're doing. On that side yeah, I know a lot of drones and, but there's no eggs, which is good. I'm just gonna set this down over here. That is good. That was kind of heavy too. Well, look at that, you know, we got a little uh -huh. bit of capped honey here. Same thing on the other side. It's good. Hey. Hey, they got the memo to make honey. Had a couple sunny days too. And so you might think, hey, why not just keep the bees longer? You know, why in the summer mm -hmm. we definitely still have some warm days ahead. But the problem is, um, there's just not enough warm days and the flowers are starting to kind of wane. Oh wow, okay. See this, we have quite a bit of honey still have in some here. Drone brood, though. But, oh, God, but we still have some drone brood here and so we can't extract this. So if they came across, if, if we took this to get extracted, you take a hot knife across the whole top and when it was spinning out the honey, you'd be spinning out the larva and all these little dead bees. So we gotta wait but these have to is probably within yeah, a few days. Yeah, that one's coming out. So like that one's coming, coming out. out it's, so. it's very close. But there is honey in there. It's, yeah, it's and exciting it's heavy. to finally see a little bit of honey. Mm -hmm. Same here. Yeah, just usually to... you'd see it across the whole thing, but okay. Okay. Well, this only has honey. A little bit drawn out comb. Okay. Yeah. So this one's got a bunch of honey there. It's not capped, but there's a lot of honey in there. <laughs> Some, gives me hope for the other hive too. Yeah. This one's doing, I mean, it's not great, but it's for something. Mm 
Yeah, uh, they're they're probably getting ready for the winter too. They're ready for the darkness. They can sit and watch Netflix all winter, mm -hmm. chilling in the hive. All right, we still have a queen alive in here. Yeah, she's so she's still alive. And so after we take the honey, if we choose to, you can just release her back in and she start laying eggs and get back to work. And, it is... and you'd have to give them sugar water, right? Yeah. For the, yeah, to get ready to for the sugar fall. water. The bottom half of this beehive was pretty uneventful. We went through just to make sure nothing was going wrong, but there wasn't any honey and it went really quickly. So one of the ways that beekeepers just kind of have a quick sense of how the hive's doing is the weight. So this right here, this weighs like 40 pounds or so. so that's bees and honey. And uh, down below, this other one, that weighed maybe like 15 pounds or something. It just was mm -hmm. down below, they almost had no honey at all stored down in there. So we'll see how it is compared to that, that other one. One of these boxes, if it's totally full of honey, it can be up to like 50, 55 pounds or something. So no honey to speak of on the bottom. A little bit of honey on the top. Yeah. Not terrible, but not great either. But a lot of things did go well. We didn't ever lose a queen. We didn't get a new queen. We didn't have a swarm. So we gotta be grateful for those things. We just had a weird summer. Okay, this has been the better hive. Also the more aggressive hive though. Yep, more aggressive and more bees. a lot more bees here. You can already feel it, they're a bit more aggressive. Yep. This first one out is tricky, it's really tight there. Okay. Oh man, they are not happy. Are you all closed up good? Yes. So definitely, wow, there's so much pollen on that one, but quite a bit of honey. Oh, I mashed some honey there when it when it pulled apart. You can see it there, and the bees are just going to town eating it. It's coating that one. And, okay, we're just gonna set this here on the side so we got more room to work. Hopefully these pearls will settle down a little bit. A lot definitely more honey on that. A lot that. more honey on that one. Yeah, and not only is it more, it's it kind of comes out more. The other ones were sunken down a little bit more. This one, it's more relief there on it. Well, some. Not totally packed full, though. For sure. There have been some years where I've had a whole box of this, just nothing but honey, and more boxes on top of it. I mean, this one's definitely got more honey. One drone or drone brood cell there, but not many. Queens down on the bottom. Oh yeah, those were queen cells, and I ripped those open somehow. Interesting. Where did those come from? You must have missed them. But they're not. Uh, Catch it. Interesting. Good catch. There's a brood. But I'm afraid to sit back down. These bees are. Just a so There's many. a big mound of honey there. Yeah, and then you got the same thing. Oh, look at this. Queen cell. Another. I don't. What I think it is is it's. I don't, it's a start of a queen cell and they got the royal jelly in there, but they don't have an egg to put in there. So they're, you know, if they had an egg or something, they would, I don't think that was actually a queen. Hmm. They're trying to make it's one. It's like it wouldn't hatch, but well, it. because there's no egg or I, I don't know, yeah. Hmm. What's this on the bottom? That's another one. Yeah, they really want to have a queen. wonder if she's dead. Oh, 
wow. wow that's there's a almost full one wow that's awesome yay <laughs> i'm gonna get Look at skunked. all that yeah Ooh, yeah that's, that's a good one great. That's nice. a really good Just one. Nice and solid. Ooh, this next one looks good too. Oh yeah. This side's not very good, oh, but that not. one is. This one. Oh wow, that's like full. Yeah. Yay! Ooh, wow, it's heavy too. Yep. Good. So this is not cap honey, but still really close. You know, with how they're doing, if, if we had forecasted for another week of sun, I'd probably let them just keep going. But it's forecasted for rain for the, almost the whole week, so time to harvest what we got. Wow, that is stuck in down there. Something is really tight down the bottom. Is there more queen stuff? Oh, there's the... Okay, a couple. This one just has a couple of the drone brood, and they're like almost ready to go. There's the queen. Wow, so many bees around her. Oh, she is around. She is spunky and she's alive. Alive, you can see it. All right. Well, we didn't get skunked. No, not at all. But oh wow, so much heavier than that other box. Oh, that's what you want. Big heavy box. You want to look at this one? Sure. That first one is always tricky. Nothing. Nothing? Okay. So, the bees usually put the honey up high. For whatever reason, they store it up higher. And so, you're going to get most of the honey up high. And so many bees. Once again, the bottom box didn't have much going on, but it was worth checking it just to make sure everything was okay. At our last hive check, I was considering whether I needed to add what they call supers, which are smaller boxes on the top where the bees can deposit their honey. And in normal years, you'd add one, two, or three different layers of those to collect additional honey, but there just hasn't been enough honey this year, and so I never did it, and we kept these two bigger boxes. Saw some drone on that. There's a little bit oh, of honey. Oh, yeah, a little bit. Several drones. Um, pro Everett, probably only about five more minutes, but the bees are really buzzing around, so give us a little space, okay? So next year will be really interesting. We'll see if we do the bees again. Uh, maybe we'll trade in the bees and do tilapia farming here in the yard. Let us know in the comments. I've heard that's a cool thing to do in Hawaii. All right, my wife's not so encouraged about the tilapia farming, but you know, we've done different projects over the years. For a while we had goats, we had chickens. We kind of come back to the bees and the garden and all that. And raising all our children. Okay, just making some room to get them all in there. Well, one last time to strap these bees down before we harvest, we pull out the honey. It'd be a real shame to have a bear come and steal all of our honey before we get this. I have a cousin who's a bit older than me, and he had bees here uh, about 10 miles away from where we live, and they, uh, they had a black bear come in their yard and destroyed everything. Didn't get any honey, so let's hope. Who's that? That was Nathan. I didn't know he did bees. Yeah, well, they did it once. Oh. Back in... In the 90s. Wow. Yeah. Uh, they did it once and they were close to harvest and the fat black bear came or something. While Mark's closing up the bees, we can take a look at the potatoes. They're flowering. Here. Mark says he thinks they look tall and skinny this year, but I don't know. I think they look great. Just about everything came up. Oh, this bee stung me and died right on my thing, but I didn't feel the sting. It just went into my leather glove. I was just there with its stinger sitting. Poor little thing, she thought she was defending her hive. Camera up a little higher. 
this right here. They need to fly away. Go, go. Okay, on your shoulder. Right there. I think I got them all. Do I have any on my back? Nope. Okay, my gloves got extra sticky this time, and now the camera has sticky <laughs> stuff all over it. Yeah, I know. It goes on my hand, too. Well, this is my first year officially helping with the bees. I've helped a few times here and there before, but never this consistently. I feel like I learned a lot and it was a, it's kind of a lot of work. They're a high maintenance project in the summer because you do have to check on them every seven to 10 days, but it was enjoyable. I enjoyed learning more about the whole process. I enjoyed having you do it too because Sometimes it got kind of tiring just doing it on your own. So I appreciate you helping out. Yeah, I think I did it every time but that maybe once or twice. A couple times I looked at them without you. I looked at them once alone. It did not go well. But it was when they were really angry. And so Mark had to come and then they were really angry with him too. So yeah, that was my one attempt at doing it alone. While I was in the shed, I saw our little raspberry pickers here, or just like a raspberry picking thing. In the past, we used to open up our raspberries as like a you pick farm. People could come, it was like $2 per little tray. They could bring their kids and pick. We haven't done it the last couple years because our harvest hasn't been that great. I don't know if we'll do it this fall because we'll just have to see, but Let's go see what we can find. I have seen some red out there. I picked a handful uh, when I came home from the grocery store today. Let's see if we can fill a couple of these. Some berries are just like a day or two away from being ready. They're like a light pink. Oh, that's grandpa. I was like, what's coming? Like these ones are like a day or two away. Good job picking them with yesterday. Well, they picked some, yeah. Uh, where's Mark? Uh, out in the shed. We just finished the bees. My problem, I just want to eat them all. When raspberries are like $8 for a little pint, you just want to eat all these. I do most of the raspberry picking in the rain, so it's nice to pick this first couple batches just when it's nice out. The trick about raspberries is they like to hide, so you really have to get up underneath to be able to find the berries. A lot of people just want to pick the ones that are really easy to see, but a lot of them are hiding up underneath. Okay, this was a very lazy picking of the raspberry patch. I probably ate more than I picked. Um, I did go pick some strawberries. I got excited from afar. It looked like I was gonna have a lot of strawberries, but unfortunately most of them had been eaten by some sort of bug or slug or something. They were like, you could see the top still, but they'd eaten the whole entire bottom. So that was a little bit sad. I did get a couple of super sweet wild uh, strawberries. This is just the beginning of the raspberry patch. For every one that I picked, there were like 20 that are just a couple days away. So that's really exciting. Usually I come out here with a bucket and a belt and just go to town with an audiobook for like an hour, pick every single bush. That was not my goal today. Just wanted to enjoy some fresh raspberries. So more of that to come, probably not on the channel. Picking raspberries is not really that exciting, but I am excited that that season is upon us. This afternoon, Hunter went fishing and he got this awesome silver salmon. Tell us about your fish, Hunter. So it's a it's a male silver salmon. Why don't you just pick it up and show us? Oh, it's kind of mega mortis, but 
Yeah, this is a uh, male silver salmon. Probably the biggest one I've ever caught. It was an epic fish. Way to go. <clears throat> so we got Hunter taking care of this one and we're gonna hopefully have it for a nice Sunday dinner in a couple days when uh, we have some family over. Okay, the day has come to cook our salmon. We are making salmon rice bowls. This has become one of our favorite recipes. I'll put it down in the description below. We've got the salmon marinating here and we're gonna air fry it here in just a minute. Then we've got avocado, green onions, carrots that have just been into little matchsticks. They're doing cucumbers. Some rice cooking here. Hunter is shelling edamame. It goes on top of the salad spinner in there. We're doing some matchstick peppers. Who has the TV And then to top it off, we use some of this Japanese barbecue sauce. This is some goyujang sauce from Trader Joe's and some Kewpie mayonnaise, Japanese mayonnaise. And then this multi-purpose seasoning, which is seaweed and sesame seeds. We'll show you when they're done. It's a mix of fresh red and coho or silver mm. that Hunter and I caught the last oh. couple days. What is it? Red and? Charlie, come here. Hello. Hi, Sarah. Charlie. Charlie. Hi, Lizzie. Watch out, Bennett, I'm gonna open up the chicken get out of you, you can the chicken nugget. He made a chicken nugget. These are some of my favorite times in the kitchen when the kitchen is just full of helpers. The boys helped a ton getting this food ready and everybody was so hungry and this is really one of our favorite meals for a crowd. The bowls are just delicious. I will put the recipe down in the description below because this has become a go-to recipe for our family. We hope you try it. Mm. Grandma made us some rhubarb crumble. Looks delicious. Mark's sister was heading back to England the next day, so this was our chance to host everybody and just get one more afternoon together where we don't see each other for a long time. We love spending time with family, we love hosting, and this was just a wonderful afternoon together. Well, friends, the family just left. Always hard to say goodbye when you know you're not gonna see family for a while, but we had a really nice time with them. We got the bees checked. I think we're gonna get a little bit of honey. We're gonna let those drones come out. Mark and I did some research. It should be in the next day or so that those last couple drones should emerge and we will get our honey harvested for this season, which is so exciting. I hope that you've enjoyed that process. Thank you for those of you that have you know, been interested in that. I, um, it was fun to do that this year. So thank you for spending time with us the last couple of days. The salmon bowls were amazing. So check out that recipe if you like to eat salmon. We'll see you again real soon for more of This Alaska Life.